Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again on our pandemic projects. This one was previewed for you last week, and uh, it's about time I get started on it. I've been uh, working on some, a lot of customers' reels. I haven't had a chance to get to some of those that are mine, but this one came by way of a uh, parts reel purchase. It was very stiff, and uh, we're going to open it up and see why. But uh, overall, this is a nice reel. It's, it's a Langley spin drift. Langley was one of the first of the manufacturers to bring spinning reels into production. Langley was an aluminum uh, molding and fabrication company. It was founded in 1939. During the war it made aluminum parts for airplanes and post-war it changed some of those plants over to making uh, spin fishing reels which were just making their debut uh, this side of the Atlantic. Spin, spin fishing reels were around in Europe prior to the war but uh, they really started getting introduced. The major manufacturers started picking up on them and uh, production increased, as did popularity uh, in the 1950s and 60s. So we'll work on this one. And uh, I got started, there's a roll pin, much like uh, the dam reels, uh, that holds that handle to the main gear shaft. Kind of goes like this. And the reason I got started ahead of that was I hate people seeing me take hammers to, uh, to metal parts. And actually, you don't. You use a metal punch. You fit it to the side of the roll pin, and then you tap it out. But uh, I, I have to do that, and I do that on, on a vise because I want that pin to come through the open jaws as opposed to try to pound it here or risk breaking it, uh, hammering it this way and uh, bending or breaking the shaft. So I got started, I pushed the roll pin out, the handle is off, the handle is going to go into the parts tray. I have a glove on my hand here to uh, protect that from who knows what's inside. And I've also taken the time to spray down the reel with a penetrating oil. In this case, I've used uh, WD-40, but uh, you can use any penetrating oil. I've certainly used enough of them. And I just uh, recommend that you make sure that you do that to loosen any screws and uh, give yourself a chance, particularly when you're working on an old reel, because you're only going to get uh, one chance to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and take those screws off. Now this is just like uh, the damn reel has two side plates that are attached to a main body. And I'm going to take them out just to make sure that they're all the same size. I don't think they started getting fancy with these in terms of different screws and different sides at the time. But one never knows, so I like to lay them on my workbench just to make sure that all of these uh, screws are the same length. If they're not the same length, then you want to know which one is the smaller or the longer of them. And uh, put it back in the same hole when you're going to reassemble. These three are the same. There's three more screws on the other side we're going to take care of. And um, I'm just going to put those in separate parts of this. So this is an interesting setup. I haven't seen it before, but that doesn't mean anything. We have a cross wind block. We have a carter pin, it looks like. Or a spring pin underneath is probably holding in our main shaft. I'm going to go figure that one out. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the top off of this. Get to servicing the drags later, and who knows what mysteries are going to be inside of this. So I'm going to take that side plate then, put that over there. With the handle removed, you can unscrew that uh, handle adjuster that allows that to uh, fall back for storage. Uh, but I'm going to take the three of these off before I play around with that main gear because I'm not certain uh, what lies underneath here, and it's always good to note prior to. Uh, complete this assembly, what the pieces and parts are. That leads me to a suggestion I make all the time, which is take pictures along the way if you do not have the schematics for these reels. And uh, make sure that you uh, take them at critical junctures, so that way if a part becomes displaced, you can uh, go ahead and find out where it was when you were taking it off, what the orientation of that part was, and how to uh, put it back together again. Alright, so this is the gear side. 
So I'm taking it, uh, I'm not certain, but I'm thinking it's like a, a, a dam reel where the, uh, I think we have to take the, uh, take the pinion gear off. Ah, oh, that shouldn't affect this. There we go, just a little bit of brute strength, that's all. Uh, big, big old gear. Doesn't seem like we have an anti-reverse in this gear, in this reel. I haven't seen anything. This is kind of an interesting little feature. I believe that's to hold your hook so that you can uh, easily store it. It's just a round stud. I don't see any any purpose to that. No. Oh, there you go. It is. That's the bump for your uh, bail trip. There you go. All right. Usually you see that on the handle side on Dio, isn't it? So interesting to know. All right, now I'm going to take the retainer off here, or that adjuster, and I can push push through the others. I'm going to put these three screws on the other side of my parts tray. I'll take the handle adjuster off counterclockwise. And you still can't push it through because you have a C-clip here. So let's go carefully take that C-clip off. See how cooperative it is. You don't want to lose these pieces because I will guarantee you they're not off the shelf pieces that you can find 60 years later. There we go, that's the C clip. And that's why I like these parts trays because they help you locate them again. Now we should be able to push the main gear through. Here's a beautifully machined aluminum housing that you would think was made yesterday. There's a reason why you take pictures because that piece just fell off the top here, off the bushing. So it's Good to note that. It's nice and clean inside. We got a beautiful workmanship on that main gear. So there's nothing here other than, I don't know, I'm feeling sand, but uh, you know, after 50 years, I guess there should be some stuff that accumulates here. It was a lot more sluggish than I would have suspected. And I think the reason for that is it's all dried. You can see coming up here, there's just a bunch of dried grease stuck here, which means this reel hasn't been fishing in quite some time. And uh, I'm just using the blade of a flat bladed screwdriver as a scraper and a little paper towel to put that on. I'm going to check the teeth. I want to make sure that they're not bent or anything. I'm going to use a wire brush. You can see the junk that the wire brush is knocking out. Just a bunch of old grease. But otherwise, this, uh, this gear is nice and solid. And I would say built to last, because it is it has last. All right, so let's get rid of all that dirty stuff. I keep a roll of paper towels nearby. It's probably one of the more critical pieces of the tools in my shop. All right, and then we're going to just loop this up and we'll put it back together again so that we don't lose those pieces and parts. That inside is nice and clear. I'm going to use a cotton swab just to clean the bushing out. Wasn't much in there. I'm going to grab some uh, fishing reel grease. In this case, it's pen precision reel grease. Just use a fishing reel grease. Doesn't matter who the manufacturer is, but please use a fishing reel grease. All right, I'm going to load up the channel here. Insert that into the carrier. Now I need the washer that fell off, and I need to put that C clip back in to hold it. There's a groove that that rides in. Most of the time, you can do this with hand strength. Although I got to admit, my hand strength isn't what it used to be. I'm just trying to grab the lip of this as it's, there we go. So you're in the groove here with that C-clip. And then we can take the uh, little cap and we'll put the cap back on. Make sure it turns easy. Take it for a spin. 
grab my grill grease again. Let's get the grease onto the teeth. Let's get it onto the face because the crust wine block is going to slide all over that. So let's make sure we get a nice piece of coverage on that. Okay, so now this is where my curiosity generally sets in. I want to find out what the rest of this reel is made of. We can start. That is a carter pin or a clip in a pin. Just want to get that clear first. It's an interesting little piece I've never seen before, but that doesn't mean that. Uh, it's unusual, it just means I haven't seen it before. So here it is, it's kind of a, I've kind of seen these clips before, I just, uh, so the flat one is going through, then I'm sure there's a hole in that uh, axle shaft where that takes it, and then the arced piece goes around the outside, and this goes right into my parts tray. Now I should be able to pull the axle shaft out. There we go. That needed some work because it's stuck. It's got a lot of old grease again. You can see how it's just dried up on top here. That dried up top would have an effect of the on the reel at the bottom of the stroke. So we want to get that off of there. Again, using the side of a flat bladed screwdriver to work that through. And I know that there's a little roughness here because I can feel it, so I'm going to use some steel wool just to kind of polish it, but also to get some of that roughness out of there. And then that can go in my tray. And this is where it's always interesting to know which way did this darn thing go, right? So we know that the stud is going to be drive, driven from the main gear. So when we go to reinstall, it's got to sit this way with these two roller pieces, and they are roller bearings. Look at this. Talk about engineering. Roller bearings on the, on the pieces here. This is a little bit dirty, so let's get this all cleaned up. A beautiful piece. You don't see a lot, but the truth says it. They don't make them like they used to. Remember, this is a very early spinning reel, too. This is kind of at the forefront of, of spinning reels. So it's, uh, it's not like they had anybody's designs to copy or anything. This was just good basic foundational engineering, mechanical engineering, solving, uh, solving issues, how to take something that's going round and round and make it go up and down. That's what the crosswind block does. And that's machine. That's a solid piece of aluminum there, which well, it goes around, comes around. Now we're making automobile engine blocks out of aluminum. Who would have thunk, right? I guess the first experiments with the Chevy, Ve Chevy Vega, that didn't go too well. But they're doing them now. Okay, got that. I'm going to hose these roller bearings down with some WD-40. Rollers, I'm pulling in bearings. I'm not sure if it's a bearing or just a roller brass roller pin, but regardless, I'm going to clean out that channel. WD-40 is a good generalized degreaser. I don't recommend it as a lubricant, but I do recommend it as a degreaser. It's also not a bad thing to put on your reels after you come back, hose your reels off and put it in there. That'll help the WD and WD-40 is water displacement. It'll help you keep your reels dry and Hopefully unclogged. And we're just working a little bit more towards cleaning this block up. Yeah, they turn nice and easy, which is what the whole idea is. And while I have that here, I'm just going to put a drop of oil onto it. I'm going to use Relex as a as an oil. That's a synthetic fishing reel oil. Just make sure they turn nicely, which they do. Normally I would clean the body out. There's not much in his body to be cleaned out. A little bit of dried grease on the side here, so I'm going to use that cotton swab to do that. 
but overall this is a very clean reel. Clean probably not in a good sense, it probably should have a little bit more grease in there. The grease that's in here is all dried up. I'm going to get the dry grease off the top here and you can just see it's coming off in chunks. That's never a, never a good thing, but when you're buying an old reel, it's probably been sitting on the shelf for some time. You kind of get to expect that. And again, this was bought as in a parts lot. So there was eight or ten other reels that part of that purchase. I previewed that purchase, I think, a week or two ago. And I, I actually bought it for this, and I bought it because I wanted to do a video on it to show everybody what these old reels were like. All right, there's three little nut caps on here. I'm not sure if those have anything to do with this at all. I think that might be a counterbalance there. I don't know, and it makes me a little bit nervous to try and try and pull that apart here. I'm trying to see if I can determine if this is a pinion gear that got screwed in. But even if it got screwed in, it has to be held in there somehow. Just taking the last bit of that hardened grease off there. All right, I'm going to shut the video off here. I'm going to go get a small uh, socket and uh, take these off and see what that does for us. Okay, I'm back. So, I've been looking up top here. I can't figure that out. And then I decided I'm going to go scrape the grease off the bottom here. Just because if I had to give up, I was going to give up with a clean pinion gear. And I noticed, just like the handle, there's a C-clip. And folks, we're all going this together now, because I have no idea what happens when I pull the spring clip. I'm thinking that the rotor is going to come off, but uh, one never knows. Kind of an interesting little piece. Here's our C-clip. And we'll see what happens. There you go. That's our C-clip. Wow. That's fun. And then our rotor should pull out this way. There you go. And now I, the rotor is actually a gear. There's a little uh, uh, washer on there. So what you learn? I mean, this is well worth my investment just to say I've learned how Langley did it. Very interesting. Hope you've uh, as much fun with that as I do. This is you're supposed to have fun while you do it, right? They say it can't be work if it's fun. Well, this is fun. Sometimes you just got to try and figure it out mechanically, and there you go. And I wouldn't have noticed that, except that there was such a hunk of grease underneath this thing that uh, it just bore uh, cleaning up, and cleaning up kind of said, wait a minute, there's a shoulder there. And there you have it. Okay, some WD-40 on the internals of this, although it's clean. Seems to be a little bit of stuff here on the shoulder, so let's get that off. I have no idea when the last time it was that this thing got serviced, but uh, we're going to do our best here. Do the same thing here, use that as a cleaner. Alrighty then. And then here's our axle shaft. So those three nuts above, we're just holding on this uh, free spool release piece and okay well that loosens that up. It's amazing what you can do with a, a WD-40 or a like product. These ones that have gotten dried grease on it or stuck. It's moving, it's moving now, that's nice. And come back and hit it with some oil after that. And I'm going to oil up that. Okay, interesting. See how it all comes together. I 
like a good suspense novel. All right, that's the top. I'm going to throw some WD-40 on here to, to loosen up the bale. This is a dead end, doesn't need anything there, but uh, make sure we can loosen that up while we're at it. We know this is a bump bale. We saw that before with that little stud on the case here that uh, just bumps in there. Let's put it back together then. This is kind of fun. Now, a little bit of grease there is going to make this thing turn even smoother inside the bushing that we just saw. Here's that little ridge where that cap is going to ride, the C-clip. So this is kind of an example of why you don't force anything. Uh, too many reels that have come in parts bins, there are parts bargains that I've bought, have been because people have done something that uh, just, uh, they got aggravated and they started just pulling at things or pushing things, or in this case, maybe they tried to unscrew the, uh, the rotor, thinking the rotor was screwed in like a Mitchell, and uh, then snap something because that's not the way that this goes. All right, now I'm going to put a little bit of new grease on there as opposed to that old grease that I was kind of scraping off. That should make this reel very nice and smooth as an operator. All right. Okay, so I just had to change cameras, typical of me. I ran out of battery. I don't have a backup battery on that camera, so if the quality of the, the picture has changed, you'll know why. We've just reseated the pinion gear, and I have to look for that small C-clip there. Find that groove. Try and push that in. Hand strength first. And we got it with that one. Just a little bit more to seat it properly. There we go, we've seated that. I put a little bit of grease on, but it looks like I wiped most of that grease off when I just uh, was grabbing that to hold it. All right, let's go put the, the back end of this on, the gear side. And I'm just going in the order that I took things off, so I guess the next thing up then before I do that would be to take our axle shaft. Now we use the steel wall to clean that up. And you don't want to put too much grease on there, that's, otherwise that's what happens when it happened before. We got all that grease accumulated up there because when you go through the pinning gear, you just wind up with a, uh, a bunch of accumulated grease up top because it's too tight. All right, we've oiled these little rollers. They wrote in the channel on the opposite side. So it's going to pay attention time. And we had the clip on the downside. That, uh, that little carter pin, for lack of a better term. There might be actually be a carter pin. It might be the proper term. That was on the bottom. I want to put a little bit of grease onto each side where that roller is rolling. I'm going to turn the piece over, seat the bearings on the piece, and I don't know if this is hard enough to see or not. And then we've got to find that little hole where the pin is going through. <laughs> oh, we got the needle in the haystack. How do you like that? There we go. That's in. All right. Now we want to take our main gear assembly. We've greased that up. We want to get a little grease into the channel here. I guess this is where you look through the side. Make sure that you got this properly mated. That's why it's kind of a little tough for this thing to pull out. There we go. We got a nice snap there. Let's 
it's hitting it the wrong way. All right, look at that. I'm not even holding it in. All right, three uh, screws on this side. Nice reel. I am always amazed by, here's, here's a reel at 60 years old or more, the manufacturing that went into this thing. So one of those manufacturers, I've been kind of remiss in doing more of these fishing reel manufacturers than that just because I really haven't had the time. I've done a couple of them. I share some of the histories with you. But one of the one I've been researching is Minn Kota which is the trolling motor manufacturer. And they actually got started in the 1930s, and the design is not much different than the ones that are being sold today. And I will be doing that one in the near term. But I'm amazing how quality and design stand the test of time. Ooh, how do you like that? Alrighty, so let's put the three on this side. There's no more here. Then our last adventure is going to be looking at the drags on the top side of this reel. And I'm expecting to see cork. I don't know why. Cork or leather. And I can't wait to solve that mystery. Beautifully machined. Screws are as tight today as they were 50 years ago. Whatever they made these out of, the aluminum body hasn't. Uh, hasn't rusted at all, it hasn't seized the screws, very nice, I'm impressed with this reel. I hope you've learned something from it as well. Okay, here's your drag set. So sometimes these look like they're pressed on, they're not, they're these metal bands. Let's see if we can't, uh, can't get this out. It's, it's a funky little spring clip. Let's see what we have under here then in the way of drag washers. Ah, so here we go. This is a nice little setup too. It's a rubber drag washer. Or a leather. It's leather. Alright. It's actually, actually working. Because no surprise there that the quality of this reel. No surprise that it's, it would be working. It doesn't need to be free on this side, but it is a little stuck. And I use a, a utility blade. You can see it's just uh, it's a it's a hard piece. It's either plastic or rubber. I don't know which. While I have that out, let's clean the inside of this. Okay, I'm going to use my WD-40. I know Con's out in Arizona. Would tell me go get the toothbrush out at this point, and uh, I would. Tell them that would be a great thing to do, but I didn't. Yes, nice, nice metal paint too. It's been inside, so it hasn't seen the same level of uh, activity as the uh, the top knob, which is showing UV fade and, and paint loss. But boy, if that's the way that spool looked originally, wow. Okay, I'm just cleaning off the debris that's on that, uh, that little washer that's going to hold this down. So there's your washer. That's your second piece. There's the assembly here. It has a, a spring and then a little plastic insert up top. And then we gotta get this crazy spring in. So this one got stored on an edge. There's a groove it rides in. And I guess you just gotta kinda work it around. 
So those of you paying attention, I took my glove off. I needed my extra little bit of oomph to uh, to bring that to closure. So this is it. It's sitting in the rim completely around and done properly. All right, back onto the reel. Wow, how am I ever going to get that out of there? A broken piece of line in the middle there. Let's try a little pocket knife here, see if we can't get lucky. Got lucky. All right, the line is out. On with this. Okay, here's our button. Our button has had a little bit of uh, UV wear and the like on it. Okay, now we're going to start by stopping to put this on, and I don't even pretend that uh, this is going to be easy. I'm always concerned when I do this because it's a cast handle, and I don't really want to break the cast. So I don't even want to pretend that that was easy, but uh, you saw how I lined it up, and then I had to get my dead blow hammer, and I went off uh, off camera to my vise, and I made sure I was on a nice hard surface as I tapped this through. Okay, so all I have to do now is get that handle adjuster set, and we'll do the big reveal. We'll make sure that uh, it's working. Ooh, look at that! Wow. I'm going to put a couple of drops of oil onto the handle itself. And here we go. Look at it. Wow, look at that. 1950s. Wow. What can you say? I know it's 1950s because Langley was sold to Zepco in uh, 1958. And even though they had a few, uh, a few more years of um, production, most of the, uh, the Langley designs became Zepco spinning wheels. Just surprised there's no uh, anti-reverse on this one. As life. All right, that's your uh, your Langley Spin Drift Model 860. Boy, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed working on this one. Quite a uh, quite an older piece, beautiful reel, top quality throughout, and <laughs> and ready to go fishing today. Wow. Okay, so this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please uh, indicate that. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have a reel that needs to be worked on and you don't feel like working on it yourself or you're unable to work on it yourself, then use the contact information at the end of this video. Uh, send me an email and I'll provide you the information on uh, how to send your reel to me for servicing. So with that, again, if you're a first responder, essential personnel or otherwise uh, involved in helping us all through this pandemic, thank you very, very much for everything you do. I wish everybody a great day. This is Second Chance Tackle. Thanks for watching.